So we have started the recording. Um, today we're going to be looking at how to give and receive effective uh, feedback in our case. Um, how to give and receive effectively uh, feedback in our case. And this could be in terms of, this could be giving feedback to a process or to someone or to um yeah or to a fellow colleague or a team member it could also be um accepting critique and also giving critique effectively without um harming the other person's yeah feelings or emotions so for today under this topic we're going to be looking at we're going to first understand the different feedback um, yeah, understand the different feedback, uh, the different types of feedback. Also, going to look at the different communication styles, and also um, planning exactly how to give and receive effective feedback. I'm also going to look at uh, different frameworks that could help us craft good feedback. And yeah, also when you're on the when when giving feedback, how exactly do you give the correct feedback? And if you're on the receiving end of feedback, how exactly do you consider or take that feedback? Um, okay, so yeah, um, so those. Start with, do you sometimes give yourself feedback? It could be at the end of the day, you're thinking about how your day went, what you did right, what you did wrong. Yes, Caleb, um, may I ask in what ways? If you can, feel free to open your mic and speak. And also, how do you feel sometimes when someone gives you feedback? Do you do you take it personally if it's a negative feedback? I'm sure if it's a positive feedback, everyone's always happy to hear and you feel grateful and excited. But what if it's a negative feedback? How exactly do we take that feedback? Do we sometimes feel agitated? Do we react out of? Uh, do we get angry? Do we? Um, yeah. How, how exactly do we handle that? Because feedback is something that in every workplace, it has to be given. Um, and sometimes it could be negative, but the goal of this topic is to make sure that um, if you're on the receiving end of feedback, how exactly do I ensure that I'm taking this feedback well without compromising the relationship that you have between um yeah the relationship that you have between yourself and your teammates okay um no one wants to contribute Okay, so I'll, uh, here we have, I really like receiving feedback. That's, that's a really good trait to have because it's um, in a way helping you improve. Um, and it's good to always accept feedback. And that is in a way helping you grow because then you get to understand exactly how to do things better. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really good. Okay, so I feel like the first thing that we need to understand to master feedback is to first understand how different people communicate. So we're all different people, we have different communication styles, and I think you've noticed that. So the first thing, sometimes you have people who give 
direct feedback without um, without really knowing that um, someone feels hurt from that kind of feedback. Um, but in, to them, they don't feel like they're they feel like they're giving you good feedback. So one person takes it in a wrong way, the other person um, really did not expect this other person to feel a certain type of way. So, and that could be just personality-wise, so understanding how exactly does this person communicate on a day-to-day -day basis, and how can we try to accommodate their personality so we don't um, we don't get hurt or feel some type of way. So in a work, so in a workplace, it, um, can anyone hear me well? So oops, uh, my Bluetooth just went off. So thank you, Helen. Okay, so. The first type of communicator is a passive communicator. Sorry, and this is someone who doesn't speak up too much, and they're easily they're just happy to go with the flow and supports uh, other people's ideas. Sorry. Um, so a passive communicator is normally the shy type. So one who sometimes they have great ideas in their head, but they don't, they're too shy or afraid to speak up. So when someone suggests something, they would rather like to go with um, with a flow of or what others suggest. Uh, so that's that's a passive communicator. And then we have another type of communicator, which is the aggressive communicator. And this is a, these are the overconfident communicator. So they they have ideas, they express them boldly, and they are very confident with the way they express. And sometimes an aggressive communicator is one who um, communicates, uh, sometimes they want their ideas to be dealt with. So to the point that they don't want to listen to other people's opinions. So it's it's not a good type of a communicator. Um, but yeah, sometimes, especially the, the confident bit of it is good. Sorry, let me just take some water. Sorry, of uh, course. Just a few minutes, I'm taking water and then I'll be back. Sorry about that, so I'm back. So yeah, we have the aggressive communicator. So they have two different traits. One is the way they express themselves and their uh, confidence is a good way. But sometimes if they, to the, the part that they don't listen to or accommodate to other people's opinions is not a good way of communicating. So you need to, this, uh, this is not a, yeah, they're not ideal for a workplace because um, so sometimes when you express your opinions and you want everyone else to follow that opinion without really accommodating other people's ideas, um, if others are not following the idea, they may end up feeling unsupported. And uh, yeah, and then we have a passive aggressive communicator, and this is someone who doesn't feel comfortable saying what they mean. And sometimes they doubt themselves, but if you, so there, and this could be um, some of you in a new environment or in a new workplace, but if you do some community building afterwards, you can then make them easily, uh, they can then become free and open to communicate. 
Um, and then we have the assertive communicator, which is the ideal type of communication style that you need to have in our workplace. So it includes some bits of a passive, regressive, or a mix. So being very confident in their point of view, so standing with your own ideas and expressing why you feel exactly that your idea is great. And you know how to communicate, not just for yourself, but also for the members of your team. And then um, they're always very confident and have high self-esteem, and they also listen to other people's opinions. Um, yeah, and then they also, the use of hand gestures and happy facial expressions are also a plus to being an assertive communicator. So with the four types of communications, I think you can gauge yourself where exactly you fall, and you can also gauge your teammates exactly like where do they fall here. So it's important to understand the different communication styles and know exactly how to deal with each and every type of communicator. So that's the first thing in understanding um, how to give feedback well. So what exactly? So when we talk about feedback, we are talking about a response to something. So it could be you're giving uh, a response to someone. So this is the work you did. This is how you did. That's a feedback. It to someone. It could also be feedback to a process. So for example, you're supposed to do a certain project and you have this number of processes. So you have to do step one, step two, step three, step four, and you have to give um, so it's just basically giving feedback. How exactly do you think this process is? Can it be improved or not? It could also be giving feedback about a product or a service that you're delivering as a company or as a team. Um, and it's always very important to do this feedback. Um, yeah, so something in our place, feedback could be between different employees. So it could be uh, different different team members. And then it could also be between an employee to a manager or a stakeholder, different stakeholders. Um, so it could be either all around it. So from employee to manager, manager to employee, manager to stakeholder, stakeholder to manager, etc. Um, and it's always very important just to understand, to get a good view of where you're going and how things should be streamlined in a business. So yeah, feedback provides response or evaluation and insights regarding the performance and workplace dynamics. So it's really important. It's a tool that ensures that the performance as well of the of each individual as well as every team um, is that. So there are different types of feedback. Um, one is positive feedback, and that is to express satisfaction and encouragement or motivation, which is everyone always feels good about getting positive feedback because then you feel accomplished, you've done uh, a good job, and then you have a negative feedback. So in our place, it's really important to take a negative feedback as a point of what could be improved or what could be changed. So it's like um, accepting critique. And sometimes if you've noticed, sometimes you're always given feedback about um, maybe a project you've done. And then once you implement that feedback or improve it, you see the results are actually always better. So it's important to have a positive attitude when getting negative feedback. We're also going to talk about that in detail. And then there is a suggestion, which is basically um, proposing for something to be done different. It could be, so we use this model for prediction. How about I suggest we do this other one instead? And that's always a good way. Um, instead of, it's always a good way to give feedback to a member of your team. So instead of saying, um, instead of saying your your model does not work. Um, your model is not good. Uh, it does not work. Instead, you can just suggest, can we try and do this differently? In that way, the other person won't feel um, hurt by how you've expressed feedback. 
remember the goal of giving feedback is to ensure that employees communicate um, effectively or you build that togetherness. Um, yeah. And then there's an evaluation which is normally done by people of a higher rank, so managers, they kind of give you, the access exactly the quality of your performance, how did you perform here, how you not. And then the reaction is how someone feels about something. It could be positive or negative, or excitement, or yeah. And in the current digital world, you can react using emojis. We also have a variety of, um, yeah, a variety of emotions to express. And then a request is basically asking for something to be done different. It's sort of similar to a suggestion. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, to be very specific, in a, in a workplace, there are feedback can be given in many forms. So it could be evaluating your performance if you've done a project, how exactly have you done? Um, if How exactly can it be improved? So if it's a process, so we go from step one to B, C, D, can we do B, C, D, A instead? It's uh, feedback for just improving how things are done in an organization. Uh, open communication is where employees or team members are just given an open space and everyone is encouraged to share their ideas openly, um, yeah, openly and without judgment. So it could be expressing ideas, uh, what exactly you think about a certain thing. So it's mostly used for brainstorming sessions, um, yeah, or if you're trying to come up with something. And there's motivation and growth, which is something that every manager or a team member should have. Um, so as humans, motivations and growth propel us to do better. So it's important to build your team members by also giving proper um, motivation for growth. And then there's problem solving, which could also be mostly used for a brainstorm session, so you have a problem, you call every member of your team and you try and see the different ideas that every team member has on how to solve a specific thing. And then you have a 360 degree feedback, which is basically, um, some organizations have this, so um, giving feedback from uh, manager to employee and as well as from employee to manager. So the good work environment encourage 360 degree feedback. Um, some companies don't encourage, or team members don't encourage uh, giving feedback to your managers, which is also, which is very, which is a very important thing to do because then as a manager, you know exactly how to be a better manager. Um, yeah, and then you have customer and stakeholder, and this could be, um, how exactly do your customers feel about your product or service and how exactly do stakeholders think about your project or your feedback or how you're building things. Um, so those are just some examples. Um, next, we're going to look at um, one of the techniques that can help you to give proper feedback. So we mentioned that you can either be on the receiving end of it um, feedback or on the delivery. Um, yeah, it could, you could be giving feedback or receiving feedback. So when you're giving feedback, how exactly do you give good feedback to ensure that uh, you still keep, manage that strong relationship between your team members? So remember, if you deliver something in a wrong way, someone may take it uh, personally in a negative way, which is also not a good thing to do as a, as a team member. So the technique is PATH technique. So it's performance analysis feedback. So it's a three-step approach that helps to understand the cause of the problem 
while giving tough feedback. So it's valuable for managers and also helps to build strong relationships in an organization. So the first step is uh, first acknowledging the efforts that someone has put into building something. So with that, you, you kind of praise them and tell them that you don't disregard everything about the project, but the person took some time to and effort to do something. So you either praise the individual, whether the work is good or not, the first time, um, acknowledge the effort, show some enthusiasm, and because um, even if they did it the wrong way, at least they tried, they did something. Um, so it's important to start first praise and thank the individual for putting in effort and time in it. The other thing is to analyze the situation. So if you had expected this work to be done in a certain way, but it was not done in a certain way, that's the analysis. Identify exactly which specific issue or behavior that needs to be addressed and then so after saying thank you for doing this and putting effort in this, so you've noticed this and this, uh, which would have been done in a different way. So instead of saying you did a bad job, you did this, it's not good for the employee to keep working. Um, it's going to kill their motivation, which is not good. You want your employees to feel very motivated and yeah, and capable of doing their jobs. So the analysis part gets you some clarity in exactly what has been done and what needed to be done. So once you get that part well, you give feedback and you give it in a constructive way. So avoid degrading words, use precise language, and um, yeah, be very confident. And also when giving feedback, avoid any kind of bias that may exist. Um, yeah, so when giving feedback, it's basically how acknowledging their efforts and also analyze the situation well and then see how exactly can I give proper feedback here. So when giving feedback, there are certain words that are some tips just for you to improve um, exactly how you give feedback. So you can use either the start, stop, or continue, and this is... Um, it's very direct and simple. So if someone has not been doing something and you want them to start doing something, you could say something I would like you to start doing is, or something if someone has been doing something negative, it could be something I would like you to stop doing is, this. or if someone has been doing something well, you encourage them to continue. Um, so this is an, it's a subtle way of giving constructive feedback. And then you can also use the feed forward, which is instead of dwelling on the past mistakes or the things that they think that they did wrong in the past, focus on the improvements or in future improvements, like how can this be done differently? What can you do differently to help the situation? And then there's one-on-ones, which is a good way for feedback in a communication. So ensure you have regular one-on-one -on -one meetings. It could be once every week, just to get an overview of how exactly did this week go? What are some of the challenges? What are, how can we improve better? Um, yeah, just encourage that one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings between, uh, between members of the team. That, that was um, giving feedback. So this was so we're just going to look at the different ways of working. So it's very difficult, but it is very necessary. So, 
communications could lead to low productivity and yeah things could not go well our projects would not be done well so to use this feedback um so when when you're at the receiving end of negative feedback, learn and listen and the very good in this group listen and try to understand what exactly is this person trying to tell me. This is what I've done, and this is what exactly they want to do. So um if someone has a like, negative attitude towards uh, feedback, they would rather not listen to what we want to say. This is all. Um, this is just rubbish. So it's good to be some to understand this other person's view. It could be that they're trying to help you, or yeah, if you're becoming the right person. So try to see and understand exactly and apply their suggestions. So if you feel like your suggestion still works for the other, then you can find a way to give them feedback again using the path technique. So just some of the things to think about when having criticism is to control how you react to negative things. If a certain comment makes you agitated, um, try to calm yourself, control your, your reaction, because we make a lot of mistakes when um, we we make a lot of mistakes when we handle things with in an agitated way. So if you're angry, you might find yourself saying things that you don't actually mean, and that could harm your career. So the other thing is to not take things personally. So. It's always about work and it's not about you. So it's about the manager's goal is for things to go right. So if the targets are not being hit, it's not about you, it's about the work. And then take some time to always process criticism, criticism by processing. It's thinking through about how you did your thing and also thinking about the suggestions you've been given and then trying to weigh them down, process it, analyze it. Um, yeah, and then also give yourself some grace. You did the best that you could, um, the way you knew exactly how you did. So if someone didn't appreciate it or felt that you could do better, um, always say, at least you tried, at least you did some effort, at, at least you didn't give 0%. If you gave 50 or 70%, you just need to improve. And then it's always good to appreciate the people who are giving you feedback because then, they're kind of helping you improve yourself. And when you're given the feedback, don't really dwell on the criticism too much because that's also going to stress you, which will make you less productive. So instead of dwelling with the criticism, think about how exactly you can do better. Think about the future. Um, yeah, if you did, if you missed to see anything, uh, maybe you were to do something it's always good to apologize um yeah and the other thing is the mindset that you need to have about criticism so it's always good to think the best of the critique so if this is what i've been told to do um how exactly will it make my project better so think of the best uh, critique and then try to be self-aware listen very well and also respect negative criticism and take that opportunity as a learning opportunity. Um, yeah, that's it. Does anyone have a question? Okay, if no one has a question, we can look at the careers exercise for this week. So it's just an exercise on feedback delivery and we've crafted a scenario where feedback delivery is important. So for this specific tutorial, um, feedback sometimes cannot be, it's sometimes cannot be taken very, it's not like you give feedback and the other person um, 
changes exactly and does, does exactly what you do. So sometimes feedback is not just a one step, but it could take so many steps. So it could be so many yeses and nos. So we've just given you a scenario about a project and we've given more details. Um, so take your time to go through it and then you're going to see how best to craft um, how best to craft the yeah how best to craft uh, a good feedback so try and use the different feedback frameworks that we've given you like path or anything and yeah I hope you have fun doing this um does anyone have a question so far Okay, so I take it that no one has a question. If in case you have a question, please let me know on Slack. And I wish you a very great, a very good evening. And yeah, enjoy all the best with the exercises. Okay, bye. Thanks.